It's February the 13th, 2021, and this is The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. And we're back with another episode of this wonderful podcast. Isn't it wonderful? I think it's wonderful. It is wonderful. <laughs> I think it's, it's, it is it's wonderful. better than that. Iman, Jeremiah, oh, Adrian, wonderful. how's everyone today? Everyone's everyone's Good. not really with us, I think. Imar is watching a match while we're <laughs> recording. And uh, and uh, Jeremiah is watching some, I don't know, some trial. Is there something interesting going on right now? <laughs> something. It's closing I'm, arguments, possibly. yeah. I'm trying really hard not to be a cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the cat thing uh, is... Um, we, should have, we should have really started all you. as cats. We next, really there's should. always next week. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's always next yeah. week. Um, it is episode 168. Um, we have three things on this episode. Not just one topic as usual. We have a... A quick uh, news update, something that came through the blogs. And I, I've been sent this for, from four or five different sides. Uh, everyone was really excited about this. Um, we'll talk about that. Second thing is we want a teleprompter update from Adrian, because uh, <laughs> we made an episode about it. And I know that a few things have changed. So um, we might uh, talk about this a bit. And then is our uh, the, kind of the main thing that we decided for this episode to take pictures and talk about them. So. Mm -hmm. That's the three things we have planned. The first thing is, yeah, the 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 blog entry. What wasn't the blog entry? It was a Wired article that came through, and it was in everyone's on every photographer's mind uh, th an article about new flat lenses coming out. See, I like I like the idea <laughs> of flat lenses. I like, I mean, we've talked about lenses. this before. We've talked about that before, and. I, I don't know. Long time I don't know. ago, I think. A long time ago. <clears throat> long time ago, and uh, I, I, I was, I was very skeptical, and I, uh, I kind of still am. So uh, I don't know. Oh, about, yeah. I don't know about you. No, it's just like a pancake lens for your camera. I, but personally, it's, it's just about how sharp the lens is. Oops. Rather than this is the wrong design. one. Here we go. Well. Um, so, so no, it's I, not. Well, it's not. That's the thing. I read the article. I looked into it, and we had this a couple of times uh, here on the show before. Um, let me figure this out. We had uh, episode five, very early episode of the Future of Photography, where we talked about Adrian and I talked about flat lenses. Um, episode sixty-five, titled "Toothpaste-Based Lenses," which was about <laughs> the material used <laughs> in that. And it's always the same thing. And I'm, I, I was really skeptical when I saw this one. It's always the same thing. They are coming up with these, what they call meta materials, which is like a flat sheet of like a silicon uh, based, like they make processors. And they have like nanostructures on that. So you have a lens that doesn't have any extent. It's just a flat piece of something. And uh, Wired in the article claimed that it's just, uh, it's right around the corner. And okay. I looked, I looked a bit. I looked a bit into it, and I found that that is not necessarily the case. Because, um, uh -uh. um, I, I mean, the, the, the really, really full-hearted claims, like a new lens technology is primed to jumpstart phone cameras. The optics in your smartphone have been the same for more than a decade, and that's about to change. And then they go, like, there will, there will be no camera bumps anymore because you can make everything flatter. And... Turns out, no, <laughs> no. I looked into that, <laughs> and they are still at the, sp mm. they're still at a point where those lenses don't have like a full uh, color range. They're actually in a very ah, narrow, okay. in a very narrow piece of the spectrum. We're talking, we're talking uh, the um, far or near infrared, nine hundred forty <laughs> nanometers plus minus like twenty nanometers. Really, really. Do you? Narrow I have a range. question for the for the group here about sure. lens design, new lens design specifically for uh, cameras. Um, don't you think that the next version, real jump in lens design, will be basically AI based, where it won't be as much of a traditional lens design, 
with curved glass and focus points and all the rest of it, but it will be a way of a transparent, translucent piece of optics that interpolates every pixel for what it really is um, under conditions of kind of high speed wireless communication. So that, that's interesting because because it in two ways. One is it's like those massive arrays of radio Oops. telescopes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fighting technology today. Keep, it was like that on. boring. You had to run the outro music already. Oh, Chris. Keep on going. Keep on going. <laughs> we're, we're, we're done. We're done. <laughs> so th it's interesting because you know, in, in one way, what you described there, Jeremiah, sounds like radio telescopes or, or, or other wavelengths, you know, uh, astronomical measuring devices, where you know, where, where they they do operate large arrays and the collectors are, are a long way apart from each other, and so and and they have to use. If not AI, then at least software um, to to stitch stuff together. Like remember the the picture they took of a black hole uh, a couple of years back. That that you know, that right. was phenomenal. And um, then the other thing, actually, is something we've had for some years already. Which it, yeah, because if you think about it, um, something like you know uh, a little pocket Sony camera, the the RX one hundred line, I think. Um, I think they were one of the early lines of cameras to have software correction for known lens aberrations. Not on an again, not on an AI basis, but you know the you know the it is the, the lens doesn't work on its own, as it were. Yes. You know, it only works in conjunction with the software in the camera. So so yes, I believe you, but possibly I believe you because I think we're all halfway there already. <laughs> it just sounds like a good idea. Yeah, sky replacements in camera. That's what AI is for, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Getting rid of objects that don't belong. <laughs> Yes. Taking selfies that make you look great. Um, no, uh, optical design hasn't really changed. <clears throat> it, it's like the history of film until we had a, a jump to digital filmmaking that was equal or better quality. Uh, the technology of basically just sprockets and uh, f the photography of moving images where an image would be captured then next one pulled down pulled down pulled down so this hasn't really changed and lens designs have gotten more sophisticated in terms of the materials used i.e the kind of fluorite or you know whatever they're using to to kind of get light through glass with more efficiency uh is still an old design and it, it still doesn't take into consideration is it, what we is that capable. strictly true because my impression is that if i bought a 50 mil 1.4 lens in 1980 it'd fit in my jeans pocket right if i buy a 50 mil 1.4 lens today i need a forklift <laughs> <laughs> well what? and and those and those that's that, those flat lenses won't really change that. I mean, they, they will be lighter for sure when if they come, when they come, but they will not be, they, they will still be lenses, right? They will still focus the light in very much the same yeah. way as prep, as regular lenses do. So the designs will probably not change that much, possibly. But again, this is... This is kind of yeah. the main gist here. There's, there's, there's nothing spectacular, really spectacular happening right now, as far as I can tell. Um, some changes Must here and there. Must have been a slow news week. <clears throat> sort of, yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could, I, you know, to sum this up, I, I just think that image capture could weight itself much more to uh, software um, than hardware as yeah. it's been for the last Yeah. Year. Oh, there will yes. be changes for sure. Um, Adrian, on to your teleprompter Odyssey Quest. story. Uh, Quest. <laughs> Odyssey. Well, an, an Odyssey was quite a long journey, if I remember, and this one is actually mm. uh, this one is actually quite a short journey. Um, uh, so last week we we did a show all about whether or not I should get a teleprompter, and I was quite positive by all of that. So uh, I went out straight after the show. Went out. To, oops, <laughs> who am I kidding? I didn't. I didn't go out. <laughs> Sorry, slip of the tongue there. Old old school language models. Uh, yeah, I, I swift, swiftly after we stopped recording, I went and ordered uh, a teleprompter and a small monitor to work with it. They duly arrived and very excitedly I set them up and the following day I packed them back up and shipped them back off and got uh, and returned them uh, a, a number of reasons so uh, so, so, so you for, are looking off, the you're looking at your camera right now you're I not looking, looking into camera, uh, right a mirror of sorts 
No, not I'm not. No, so I'm looking straight into the lens of my camera, and of course, as I do that, I, I am unable to look the three of you in the eye, as it were, because mm. you're on my laptop screen, which is sat on the desk below. Um, so uh, first off, the positives. Um, the 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 kit I ordered was really good kit, right? So uh, it, it seemed it was well made, it worked well, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I set it up on my little tabletop tripod. Uh, but it, it, but ultimately it just kind of dominated my space and I couldn't really think or about anything else other than the tri other than the, the teleprompter that was lurking right in front of me. Uh, so I think you know, in a different scenario, if I had my camera further away, for example, you know, uh, which I don't have the opportunity to do in my setup. Uh, but if I had the camera further away or something like that, it would have been great. Um, uh, but it, but that it, it just it was a bit overbearing. Um, the the whilst the kit I bought was great, the monitor and the teleprompter themselves were were really of different scales. So the monitor was quite small within the teleprompter setup. So I did think about getting uh, you know just sending the teleprompter bit back, keeping the monitor and buying a smaller teleprompter unit. Uh, uh, in the end decided against that because although the monitor was great uh, and it was really nice to just be able to look at the, the lens a couple of things uh, I wasn't quite comfortable with one is the, the monitor was, was um, very small um, not very small but you know, uh, not, not big and that meant the computer UI on the monitor having it as a second screen was, was tiny and it was going to strain my eyes to look at it um, and secondly, um, I noticed that even if I was, even with a small monitor, if I was looking at the edges of the monitor, it still didn't look like I was looking in the camera lens because you have to look, you have to look almost <laughs> directly down the lens to get that eye contact mm. effect. I did a few little test recordings um, and I found that if I had a screen full of people, let's say I was in a meeting with six other people and they were all on this monitor screen, uh, that uh, if I was looking at the ones on the edge, it still didn't look like I was looking them in the eye. Um, so overall, it didn't quite achieve what I wanted it to achieve. Great tech, different circumstances. It worked, worked really well. Like a one, if I was doing mostly one-on-one -on -one conversations, and I balanced the size of the teleprompter with the size of the monitor and stuff like that, that could be really good. Um, you know, follow. I watched a few of those Errol Morris things that you guys you know talked about last week, mm -hmm. and yeah, you know, I could see how one-on-one -on -one that would work really, really nicely. Yeah. Um, but but wasn't for me. So. No harm, no foul. Tried it. It was an experiment. Didn't quite work. Got excited about it. Got to play with some new kit and then got to send it back. <laughs> I also um, remember this whole thing being a bit of an odyssey, being a bit of a, a quest, a journey to figure out what works, what doesn't work. And I tried all sorts of different things until I arrived at what was kind of comfortable for me. So waiting for software. Well, as I said, if, if we if we were doing this in FaceTime, Apple's FaceTime, then it would correct our eyes automatically. And, and that's Ooh, about weird. it. And that's about it. So I'll, I'll get my phone. And that's <laughs> all you do need, this over right? FaceTime. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is a new thing. So this is yeah. So again, I mean, with the setup I have, I'm I'm already you know in the in the audio visual sense probably way well definitely way ahead of most of the people that I work with who who are either using you know the equivalent of call center headsets or, or you know or, or they're just using the microphones and speakers in their laptops and mm. you know, and the cameras in their laptops so you know I uh, in terms of uh, you know one of one of my professed objectives which is to, to continue to up my game and be professional in my you know look professional in in as, as I try and act professional in my professional appear life professional. appear prof <laughs> thank you yes if you can fake that you can fake anything right? <laughs> so uh, uh, I think uh, I, the setup that I bought I, I was was not quite necessary to to keep me above that curve Water. yet <laughs> yet until everybody else gets better cameras then i'll have to do something <laughs> okay let's uh look into our main topic we had uh given each other the tasks to decimate each other's photos no well to decimate one of Adrian's one of photos, and then decimate <laughs> our own photos. So what are we talking about um decimate is this iphone app that does glitch type photography that filters and, and kind of destroys pictures with different kinds of filters. And uh, the task was to take, no, to, to first to run a photo by Adrian through a decimate. So Adrian gave us, uh, what was it, a shot of your garden or something? 
Um, yeah, it was from the back of the house out into the field mm. behind the house. Um, it was a Sunrise, foggy morning with the sun it? coming up behind the trees. And... Right. And the second part shall was... We... Sorry, go ahead. I, I, I was just going to say, sh shall we talk about what decimate is for those who don't we'll really we'll know it we'll look at it at the at the with the photos i think we can easier explain it when we look mm -hmm. at the actual photos um just to finish at the second the one part. thing i do the one thing i do want to say about the whole exercise in terms of decimate yeah is mm -hmm. of all the apps that i have used I found it almost impossible to control totally. and, and revisit <laughs> we'll, what I've done. We'll yeah. get to that. We'll yeah. get to that. Um, but the second, the second part was uh, to take our own photo. Each of one, each of us take one of our, of our own photos and uh, do whatever Decimate does on it. Um, and I think we've all failed because we've all submitted like. <laughs> I don't know. Ten feels, photos. Yeah. Feels like twenty photos each. It's probably not that many, but um, so um, let me let me. It was bring... seven. That's what I did. Seven. You started it, Chris, <clears throat> and I so think here's... everyone just followed you. Well, so so here's here's what I did. I I submitted <laughs> six or seven photos, but just as a as an explanation kind of thing to show you how I got to that result that I've got to and ah. Uh, and okay. you and you and you took the cue and said, "Oh, he's maybe more than one." So Ooh, seven. Let's do that. Um, so <laughs> let me let me just start showing those photos to give you an idea. I don't think we have the original by Adrian here, but you can kind of guess what it looks like by just looking at them. So mm -hmm. um, I'll just go to through through my progression and how I got to this result. And I'm full. I fully agree with you, Jeremiah. This app is almost impossible to control and it's <laughs> it has like a whole bunch of yeah. different filters built in and you can choose those and uh then you, there's there's like buttons to randomize things and that that can be the filter but selection. then when you find one you like you find that you can't remember <laughs> exactly. the name of it so you can't get back to where you were <laughs> so yeah once you once you paper next to you once you randomized it and went forward you cannot really go back to what you saw like mm -hmm. a second earlier so i i did i guess what most of us did uh, i just randomized it and, and waited for a good result to come up and then play with that a bit so that is that is the way the app is built uh, it yes. always has been i mean the app must be 10 years yeah. old at this yes. point um it's one of the very early apps but it's there, there's the there's the um there's the macro level and the micro level if you like yes. so you can randomize the effects there's a mm -hmm. list of what 20 different effects which are very destructive i mean pixels mm -hmm. will die i mean here's an example um, this was my first one and then this was the second one and it just tore everything mm -hmm. apart of course that's yeah. what you want to do with this app and then this is another one mm -hmm. and i kind of like i love this. that one i like this pixelation yeah. now i'd love to take that and do something else with it you know mm -hmm. Yes. So, yeah, I, I, this this particular effect, yeah. and again, I can't remember what they're all called either, but this particular effect that yeah, Chris is showing right is now is kind it's of like the, a cross -stitch. reminds me of all, a cross between a Liechtenstein painting and, and so an like old a, newspaper a print effect, from the 80s, yes. you know, it's dot, you know, dot, lot, lot, lots of lots of dots making up the picture. Looks like a dot matrix print. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does look like a dot matrix To me, it looks print. like a, a cross <laughs> stitch, like a tapestry, uh, yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Good point, yeah. And and, so, and I kept hitting I, I kept hitting that that randomize everything button and then uh, hmm. yeah that was one that was okay ish and then and this happened funny. and I was like whoa holy <laughs> cow what yes. happened so for for all You're of you a who genius. Are, for all of you who are listening um, this is like it looks like an like exploding sun in the top and uh, weird tentacles yeah. psychedelic uh, How did psychedelic you get that? tentacles Picture. coming down but I like this little sun thing up there because it kind of corresponds with the with the sun that is in the original picture but it, this was a bit mm. too crass and then I went into the details and I just toned it down a bit and this was my result I ended up with uh, ah, I see. more more preserved war, war of the world with more there, of the there world are, yeah, and this is the artificial part it is a frustrating mm. app to use at times because, you know, uh, <laughs> yes. especially when you're not getting good results. So you're clicking away at the <laughs> at, at the, the the heavy randomizer, uh, and then yeah. you know, just as you see something you like, you, your thumb back. is in clicking mode still, and you click past yeah. the effect yeah. that you like before you can stop. Can, can I just say I didn't use the randomizer at all? I, oh, I, interesting. Ah, okay. There we go. You just went in and chose. I just 
started yeah. to play with combinations. So uh, yeah. um, I'll, and, I'll, and, okay. I'll go through. This is, uh, by the way, this is our future photography gallery. It's at tftf.com slash photos. We'll put the link into the show notes so you can all see them. And I'll go uh, just in the order of submit submitted photos. So the one that I took, my own photo, and uh, decimated is is a self selfie that <laughs> I just liked how it duplicated me and then put some weird fork, fork-like structure in the left there. I have no idea where that came from. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lunchtime. <laughs> oh, it's good. That's fun. It's, it's, uh, it's giving you a funny-looking face, Chris. That, 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 that's exactly what I was going for. Yeah. So it, it, it is, yeah, it is difficult. It, it is an interesting app to use because you, you, it, a lot of it is random. A lot of it is serendipitous. There are some controls you can control blend modes and op- opacity uh, and, and stuff like that. Yes. But it is, it is, and Even you can choose which effects to, get very mm. hard to to. I mean, they don't really use the blend modes accurately. They they kind of imply, you know. Yeah, like yeah. You, yes. They just layer layers mm-hmm. on layers on layers, which is effective, but but there's no way of really controlling it. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, unless you do it one at a time and you bake them in because there is a um, there's a fla- there's a layer flattening function. So you can use one effect at a time, get uh, it to okay. a point that you like it with a blend mode and a particular keep, yeah. randomized set of parameters. That's exactly what I mean. Lay, yeah, flat, flatten it and then add another layer. So you can, you can build it up, but ultimately you don't have a great deal of control. Mm. It's interesting you find it very frustrating, Jeremiah. <laughs> so let's, let's move well, on. to get a result. You know? <laughs> Whose is that? Oh, these are mine. Okay. Mine. Yeah, so, I like this one a lot. I'm, so, I'm so a fan this, of this one. Yeah. It looks like, this look, yeah. it looks like an, antlers, yeah. yeah. Antlers, yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's taken the, tr- the branches yeah. of the trees and made them look like antlers. It's kind of what I, I, I would think of as a kaleidoscope effect. Right, exactly. In, in yeah, it's it's yeah. duplicated images and, and, and mirrored images. So it's mm. it's it's come out with a, a, a semi-symmetrical pattern, really, out of all of it. A which, Rorschach test. Which is... Did you miss not having some just basic exposure color uh, and contrast controls? No, no I, just, were... I just enjoyed it. <laughs> well, like, let go. It's, just, it's like shooting a Holger, you know. You just got to let go and enjoy it. Interestingly enough, this oh. photo. I mean, there's the there's the antlers, but then there's also like the sun is is is, is like they're so often that it looks yeah. like you're 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 actually looking into headlights of like a UFO coming mm. at you. So, oh uh, yeah, interesting. I hadn't mm. thought that. Yeah, good point. Very alien world. feeling. Yeah. I like this. There's about eight or nine suns in the picture now, as yes. it's the way it's duplicated the pattern. So that yeah, that was one. Uh, here was some sort of you know cra- crazy colors, posterization kind of thing. Um, it uh, some light effect in the middle that looks like a, or almost like a mm-hmm. I don't know a, 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 an enormous comet or something like that in the sky, yes. not far mm-hmm. from the sun. So, mm-hmm. so that one was a bit of fun. Uh, what's the next? Uh, oh, I, I I too enjoyed the That's the pointer list slash cross hatching yeah. effect. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to find out the name of that one. Yes. <laughs> Good yeah. luck with that. Yeah. You have to go through them <laughs> one by one, the, fit, uh, the filters. Yeah. So, so I, yeah. I played with it a few yeah. times. Uh, the, all right. Now, this is one of my own. Um, so uh, I love that. That would be a beautiful painting. I really it? like that. Yeah. Well, beautiful. you can sometimes get, yeah. Although it's, it's like it's a designed. desert. Is it in a desert somewhere? Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, actually, it it's like... the sea. Ah. Uh, wow. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a. There's a so dog, you'll see, so what you're seeing here is I'm stood on the beach and there's a, oh, and a pier. What, uh, there, there's a row of wooden posts to stop the beach and to see what they call mm. a groin in this country. I don't know if that's a word that travels, but uh, uh, yeah, but not in the same mm-hmm. way. Exactly, that's no just why I asked. So, 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 so <laughs> where, well, when the current yeah. of a beach goes across the beach and can wash the sand away, and they build wooden stakes out and a big fence to stop the beach being yeah. washed away, that's called a groin. I think it's uh-huh. spelled G R O Y N E. I think, but I uh-huh. may be wrong on that. I think you might be right. Uh, it looks and, like an impressionist uh, painting of like where a Tourig village would be. Exactly. Yeah. Well, behind exactly. that, so, so the big the big blob of, of pink in the middle of the of picture is actually a wave crashing. And in the background is, is oh. a pier. So oh. it, it's, it's, it's a bit more visible oh. in the next shot, I think. Yeah. There you go. I like that That's one. Same, too, same yeah. shot. Yes. That's really kind of painterly looking as well. Isn't yeah, it? Yes. Um, and we're we're quite lucky in this country. You have you know lots of lots of old piers that stick out into the sea, and yeah, you know, that what particular one is Worthing Pier for anybody that knows it on the <laughs> south coast of England. Uh, not far from Brighton. 
but and this one and this one is pretty much only or mostly color color decimated right Yes, yeah, so this is well. It's, yes, so this is uh, where blending modes the key. So I think the blending mode behind this one was uh, the color dodge blending mode. So it's applying color changes, but it's doing that in a way that lightens the image as opposed to color burn, <laughs> which darkens. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's a nice one. That one. Um, I probably cool. had loads more. Uh, well, um, is this, this one, one is the your... River Thames. Yeah, this is one of mine as well. This is the River Thames in the evening. I'm stood on... Is that the bridge near the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the gallery? Yes. Museum? So so at the very right-hand side of the frame is the bridge with people. You can just about make out people walking along it. It's um it's the Jubilee Bridge, so that they, yeah. that they attach to the side of the Hungerford Bridge railway station that goes mm -hmm. into Charing Cross. Uh, the you. building just to the left of it is the Royal Festival Hall. So that's the south bank of the River Thames. And then off in the distance on the left hand side, you can just about make out the dome of St. Paul's and the bit, mm. uh, and aside that, the very tall buildings in the square mile, the, city, the financial district in the centre of London. And I like the, the the city part on the left being like mirrored on top of it. It's got a bit of an inception yeah, feel. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I did get quite yeah. a few that came with a sort of inception feeling. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That is something that does really well. That one is cool. Oh, this it? one is oh, interesting. So this I would, like what I did with the triangle. This one totally. was semi on purpose. The reason I included this one is it's semi on purpose. So this is a picture of the Transport Museum in Glasgow. Um, and the building yes. is, of, it, the, 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 the very jaggedy roof uh, is, is actually how the building is built. <laughs> so that's Beautiful not an artifact building, of yeah. the, the, um, of the, the app that is actually the building um, and i'm stood as you might be able to make out from the right hand side i'm stood on a tall ship which is um, berthed outside it so mm -hmm. you've got the old and the new you've got the very new museum very uh, yeah very modern architecture um, and i'm stood on a, a sailing boat <laughs> Um, uh, and I, I chose deliberately to use whichever filter it is, and I have no idea, that creates a sort of triangular or parallelogram <laughs> yeah. type patterns because I thought it would complement the uh, it would complement the architecture of the building. So it, like, it this one is on does, purpose, yeah. folks. On it purpose. Totally does, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you you actually you are the master of decimate. You you can control it. We yeah. should all we should yeah. all bow before you because absolutely. Um, yes, yeah. I agree. You're too kind. Too kind. <laughs> So, oh, who's is this? Who's is that? This is my this is my coffee cup. Oh, it's a coffee cup. I'm oh, looking right, down yes. on my on my coffee, my cup oh, that I, I my cup that I bring. I was going to say week. that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, same thing. Put it on randomize, and um, that was pretty much my favorite one out of. Um, like that again. If I could just remember the names of some of them, that this particular effect that makes those lines is lovely lines, at times yeah, yeah. but like that you can't um you can't control it very well no so i thought that we had to take an actual image rather than edit a pre-existing one so that was why i started in this way with um that was my first uh try at it and um yeah it was that was just my favorite one from five or six of them. i like the colors um, on it. i like the colors yeah yeah that's totally random, so I, I can claim uh, nothing. Well, you, per, you, <laughs> no press the, I, you press the right button, and, and you, you kind of right see. Look. You can see the reflection of my. Uh, you can see the reflection of the corner of my phone in the cup of coffee. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I, which I don't I like. I think we could do a in, an episode on abstraction and photography. Mm. And uh, yeah, That'd be I good. think so. Just mm. uh, writ large, something that that covers um, a lot of a people working in it uh mm. technology that's involved in it and uh and kind of the relationship between abstract painting and abstract yeah. photography i think that would be interesting yeah, yeah. Mm, def anyway. definitely yeah, definitely uh in my wheelhouse and, and then you and just really Lima, by the way yeah it's uh, really oh. good right my other the other one and you'll see in the, the clash i went a bit mad and i just i took one picture and i can't remember which one of them was first but i just kept randomizing the same picture so that's just and then you went different effect. and then you went, i really like you went all warhol on yourself <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. I did, and th- that's just a collage app, and I just stuck yeah. them all into to 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 make one image. The many it. moods. Oh, the, of the many so, moods. So those <laughs> those listening, this is twelve the times. Blue one was my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> the blue one was my favorite, but then that's that. That's that um, filter again that looks like a cross stitch that uh, we've yes, all. Yeah. Mm, there we go. That's lovely. So <laughs> the pink one yeah. in the corner. That, I the like one the that's pink one even in the more corner decimated too, yeah. than the others. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, crazy. yeah. Some of those are nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah, but it's good I effect. Think, um, I like it. I, I like the the overall yeah. uh, the overall Me impact too. of the collage. I really like definitely. Right, great oh, idea yeah, to make a, putting them together like this. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's a nice, it's a portrait. It's, it's so. actually not, str- now that I see it in large, it doesn't look um, straight anymore, so <laughs> I'll have to fix it. Yeah, <laughs> There's a fine. couple of the lines look look off, but anyway. I love, um, love this. So who's, then I couldn't help Irish myself, one. that's, e- yes, um, my back window, out my back window, <laughs> and it started in decimate, so it took it in decimate, and it did the sort of double exposure thing that you can see the roofs um, slightly and it shifted. Made, it yeah. made the blacks really black and it put that red blob there and you can sort of see the dragon straight lines as well. And then I couldn't help myself. So I took it into Mextras. <laughs> And then after that, I took it into Snapseed. <laughs> you you to, cheater, you. So that is a cheaty sorry, one. Yeah. But that, that's what I think Decimate is after. I, I kind of it, it, it kind of brings it to a place where you'll take it somewhere else. That's interesting. You know, at times because I'm not I'm not much of a one for adding textures. I know I know you are Ema, and it's it's a, it's a feature of your work, but it, it's not something that I do very often. But I can mm. understand definitely how something that adds that kind of you know organic texture for want of a better term it complements really well the jaggediness of decimate. So I, I really love this one. I don't. Mm. Uh, for those uh, who are kind of intrigued by textures, um, adding a light texture to an image, I mean, I'm speaking kind of through a Photoshop lens where you just mm. apply it and, and again, your blending modes are extraordinarily important. Yeah. And then your masking modes so you can actually mm. paint very subtle uh, textures on an image to enhance mm. or, or kind of push back. Um, to give a, a, a more of a feeling to it than a, a, a visual specific mm, mm. Um, is a technique that I, I happen to really like and embrace. Mm. So I, I, I love these. So next that's, photo. Um, that's Chris. No. I mean, no, 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 that's the original. That's, that's me the original. Again. <laughs> so sort of, sort of. I think glitched. Adrian glitched. <laughs> Adrian glitched by Emer. Uh, yeah, so that was kind of the first one that I did, and it was I, like that. That was the first go at it, and I kind of chucked it into the random. And I like, kind of like that one with the squares. Very drawn to the center area of the the image in general, with the where the little fence is and the way the lights come through those trees. And mm. I love all these sort of twigs and things up in the on the left. So yeah, I, I kept it because I like I like this the strong contrast in that and the light. Um, so yeah. That's the first one. And, and uh, next one. This one, uh, this is decimate mm-hmm. straight from the camera. I don't know how I got there, but I, I love the negative thing. So I cropped it to square. Just I was to, just wondering, um, how did you make this a night shot? quite but, sure yeah. what I did. I don't know. There, there is it's one like of that. there is one of the filters. We, it doesn't do it all the time, but I think yeah. if you put it on strongly, it can it can have a, an effect to turn it negative. Okay. Um, okay and I can't okay. remember which one it is. I, I want to know now because this I've actually kind of become obsessed with that section of it, with all the branches, and I'm I'm kind of messing around with with that again. I brought it into Hipstomatic and it's given me a couple of nice results. So I think it's actually going to be my picture of the day. I think my three six five. Nice. Because I've spent so much time. I spent, but obviously we'll credit you for the original. (laughs) No, I I think it's fair to say I can't remember what the legal term is, but you've definitely built upon my original image here. I'm pretty sure. (laughs) 
it's well appropriated. I love that. Love that negative space there. I just think that's really, really good. Yeah, no, um, it, it, this is great. I mean, the, it's it is it it's uh, definitely very interesting the way it's drawn out the the twigs. So there's are sort of two oh. scales actually. The one in the foreground is a tree peony, if I remember correctly, and in the background are big oak trees. Um, yeah, big the big. Tree, we, yeah. Uh, mm. Sadly, only in my neighbour's garden now. We used to have a big oak tree at the back of our garden as well, but it fell down a few years ago in a storm. It wasn't very well. I I like our oak tree, but then in the fall you have to take its leaves off the lawn and stuff, and it's lots of work. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is very true. Yeah. Oh, look at this one. Oh. This uh, yeah, I just cropped that one again to take the wall out of it because I didn't like the wall. But again, it was random. What do you mean you don't like my wall? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I apologise. I didn't like. I didn't like how the wall looked in this particular. Were you, uh, were you able iteration. to do this in decimate? The, yeah, the cropping. Oh no, I cropped no. it just before I I posted uh, it earlier actually you? because everyone when, was cheating. Yeah. Everyone was. I, I just cropped. I just cropped it in the iPhone, you know, in the in the Photos app, um, just before I saved it and sent it up. Yeah, oh, okay. so I, I like the like cubist effect. Just... I hadn't seen the cubist effect applied so, at a forty degree like, angle, forty five degree angle previously. Yeah, so like that, a... that's an interesting Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, no idea how I got there. Should have written all this down. But <laughs> we know how you got there. Well, you kept pressing the randomize <laughs> button. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, given the it's number good. of like filters that. and parameters, yeah. it can take a long time to get to that result. Yes. Yeah. I like what it's doing up in the left hand corner, where it's sort of double exposed all the branches, so it looks like there's twice as many of them. Yeah, no, that's kind of that's what I want to do is like take sections of them now, take them away and do something else with them. Like they kind of would lend themselves to nice prints. I think. Mm. Oh, yeah, wouldn't mm -hmm. they? definitely. <clears throat> well, that's one of mine following the rules very specifically. <laughs> <laughs> I might add. Very uh, purple. <laughs> I, I originally had only posted two, and then I felt so intimidated that I posted <laughs> yet a third with some corrections based on what uh, Imar had done when violently accused of cheating by Chris. So I reposted. Did that feel violent? That Did that feel violent? <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> this morning early it did, yeah, <laughs> before I woke up. Anyway, this one, um, again, this was an exploration. I wanted to keep the the original image, and, and I was looking for a way not to over glitch it, and, um, but, you know, use, use the color. I like the double exposure of it as, as well. Um, but I have no idea how I got here. It was really experimenting with uh, one filter at a time, flattening, adding another filter. If I didn't like it, I would just kind of keep going. And I, I actually think this is probably two or three um, filters that I used. Um, I was kind of trying to feel uh, for how it actually changes color rather than... Um, mm texture or lensing so that was my interpolation i, I like that uh, so i like dreamy. The, i like what this does to our language because you just said mm. i think one of my favorite sentences of of this episode i didn't want to over glitch it <laughs> 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 it's yeah it is it's, it's, well it's to be fair it is one of the more subtle images we've been discussing mm, today yep sure. right? so, totally yeah, yeah totally. it's definitely I, I like not the way over glitched that, yes yeah, I like, <laughs> no. I, it still retains. So what you guys went, of course, seen is is what it actually looked like with a, with a pair of eyes. So, so yeah. often what happens at this time of year is <clears throat> I come out, yeah, yeah, in the morning, um, and because the sunrise is so late, you know, often the sun isn't fully risen. Yeah, you know, this particular day it was quite. It was a, a thick mist. It eventually burned off, but not until you know lunchtime ish, or maybe slightly later mm. even, which is unusual here. And so, you know, you do get it, it is quite a, 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 a subtle uh, feeling in the light because of all the, the fog or the mist. And this picture of Jeremiah's retains that. So totally. it, 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 I, I, I can see that because I, of course, saw it with my own eyes. But you guys maybe not didn't have the advantage of that. So uh, I like this one a lot. Well, that. It's lovely. Mm. Uh, this is, uh, again, uh, coming out of my front door and looking up and seeing <laughs> the squirrel who lives on my property watching me, <laughs> thinking, are there nuts involved? But I, So I just took a, a snap. And, and again, I was trying to work with 
color and yet retain the image. Yeah, um, that, and that comes find, across a lot. Actually, I really like. Yeah, I like this I found because that very hard to do. It is hard with Decimate to do. You have to be, and again, you're very careful with the blending modes, and also you have to flatten your layers regularly. Yeah. Um. So it, it is. Yeah. It is. It is a tricky one. Opacity it works well as well. So sometimes I found. Once you, if where you want to do something that's a bit more destructive, but still retain the images, you can use a more destructive filter, but lower the opacity of that layer. That that one, yeah. works, that works quite and, well. And well. Uh, you can also just save the image as you go along, so that mm. you could reload it if if you've gone too far. So. so when you destroy your pixels, you can recover Adrian them. Adrian and Jeremiah, when, when are you going to bring out your um, your tutorial video for Decimate? Because you both seem to have <laughs> figured out so much better than uh, than Imar and I have. <laughs> oh, that's uh, not well, I think my, my final one was the one that I was most happy with. Uh, the next image uh, is something that I w was... Th this one or the other one? Oh, that is so cool. Well, yeah. if I'm going to be a purist, it would be the other one. But we can look at this <laughs> because the that's the <laughs> that is a decimated image. I love what um, it what it did with the colors. Yeah, and I that, love that, that again, that's what I was trying to kind of reshape the colors. Uh, there's a, a 3D artist um, who calls himself Mankind. Um, who builds, you know, uh, environments. I think he uses World Creator, uses Unreal Engine, and he tends, he's working on a piece right now that that is filled with this kind of pop color on forests and stuff. So I was, I, I you know, I've been trying to, to explore what he's been doing, but this is just with regular photography. And I, I feel this is good. I did bring it into Snapseed for my own edification. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Just for, for the final result for something that I I just Do it, felt, Which does give it a bit more uh, really coherence nice. as an image, I think. Mm. It's easier yeah, to see what's what going on. So, I, I, so, this is, so this is really interesting for those that can't see it. I love this. So this this presumably is is on one of your daily walks around yes. Venice, you know, taking uh -huh. a picture of you know, uh, a little jetty with some boats and a house in the background across a canal. And uh, you know, the colour plays. It looks like it's picked up on many of the lighter surfaces in the image and you've got mm. rainbows of, of color uh, uh, but but you know feel like they're being painted onto the surface of the things in the like image painting. rather than actually you know blocking yeah. over it so I really like this very clever it, it, it was it was like shooting through a stained glass window except the colors wrap around the subject and I thought that was Really, an interesting, mm. um, successful use of the co of, of of just the the application. And uh, I have no idea how I how I found that. And with Snapseed, all I did is I used a circular um, lens mm. blur um, to just kind of focus the eye a little bit of vignetting, and that's and not it. just I didn't touch not just else. that. For me, for me, the colors um, suggest that it's like a, more of a, of a toy scape. And yes. with with that mm -hmm. filter around it, it, it kind of gives it a bit of that tilt shift kind of miniature kind of effect. Yeah. So it looks more like a playground scene with a toy boat and everything is nice, colorful and contrasting. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah. I'm happy with this. So here we go. Is that the, is that the last one? I think one? that's the winner. So, so what have no, we no, all learned, right? Wait, have we, have we all had more. fun? There's two more. Oh, sorry. Wait, oh, no, wait, they're, wait. They're, two, they're, no, 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 no. They're just to do my pick of the week. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. We'll come okay. back to those. They're not oh. even for, yeah. Come back to those. So did we all have it fun? Was, was more yes. I did. Yes. <laughs> Loads. And I'm and uh, I'm pretty sure yeah. the 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 podcast <laughs> listeners who now are in the car uh, or doing their chores and listening to this are like, what are they talking about? So we apologize for this being a bit more of a visual episode this time. For me, I, I, I it was not it was more challenging than fun. Um, it's probably one of my least favorite oh. apps. Oh, being okay. A control f being a control freak. My goodness. Well, you can choose next uh, time. <laughs> there are glitch apps that I actually like better. Um, I like to know that I can repeat an effect um, and control the effect 
to my benefit. And I felt that mm. Glitch, while it offered mainly randomized glitching, and then you can apply its force, there was no um, rhyme or reason of how these glitch filters were presented. In other words, it didn't go from, you know, electronic glitches, you know, layers yeah, yeah, of glitches, yeah, yeah. color yeah. glitches. If they would yeah. organize the app itself a little better, I may I may That's like it. So I didn't like point. the design of the app, not mm. what it's capable of, because I think it obviously yeah. is capable of a lot of really interesting things. I just felt it wasn't friendly to a photographer. That's it's really interesting because you know, uh, f for me, um, it, it, it's almost the opposite. Um, be, yeah, so so th for me, this is fun because this is the contrast between you, who is a real artist, and, and me, who is just having a play, right? Because oh. you know, for me, this this fulfills two things. One, one is that. Sometimes I, I, I find it visually difficult to get started in my head. And so to have something that is as powerful as this and as random as this could give me ideas. And so, you know, which which then I could go and make more control of later in other apps or, or you know, effect, similar effects. Um, and the other thing is, and this is one of the reasons that photography appeals to me so much, is that I don't have the the skills at, at drawing and painting uh, the, that a real artist would. Uh, and for me, not that photography can't be art in its own right, just as photography, but for me, the, the camera is a tool to allow me to try and capture the things that I see in my head, but don't have the motor skills to capture by hand. <laughs> mm -hmm. So You know what would be interesting <laughs> is if you... Listen, I, I can paint and draw, I just do it really badly <laughs> but but if you just spent a few weeks painting a small canvas even recreating one of your photographs mm -hmm. so that you can really look at how the colors yeah. and, and paint look even if it only you were finally to look at it i think yeah. it would change your photography yeah. and Absolutely. and get you over that kind you of you definitely don't hump. give yourself enough credit that's right uh you know often looking um to the right and the left in terms of techniques can really apply a whole different discipline to one's work mm -hmm. um lately you know I, I don't know if i've mentioned this on the podcast but i i've been working with um the man who makes my inks in, in Vermont, John Cohn. And uh, we are working on a gravure print, an actual intaglio print of one of my lunar constructs. So it's, it's a digital construct landscape, which you could see on my website, um, that is, uh, I've, I've built files that will be burnt or that, that already have been burnt this week onto a plate etched but not with half tones, with continuous tone, and then with wet paper and soaked and ground ink and whatnot, and pull an intaglio print, which is a 16th century technology mm. and a modern polygonal construct into an image that has obviously never really been seen before. And I, I did the same thing with a mountain range that I created and uh, uh, had it cast um, initially to do lost wax, I'm going to do a bronze out of it. And when you start to apply effectively photographic techniques or digital techniques mm. to existing old technology, something else happens. Mm. Um, and it's that zone between them that is uh, really a great place to explore. So if you took a slide or projected from a Pico projector on a small canvas and just mm. paint your photo you'd be mm. amazed at how that changes what you see when the next time you took your camera yeah, it sounds like an interesting exercise mm. you could include I, gerbils too like <laughs> you can you can shoot all the gerbils you want they don't mind <laughs> you can paint them and everything okay <laughs> let's move on to the picks of the week and we'll start with adrian's adrian your you have given us a link to a product. I have. This is oh, uh, wait. so. Th this links links back keep, to the. Just keep going. Here we go. <laughs> this this links back to 
uh, the teleprompter experiment. So, so my link, my, my pick of the week is, is the, the pick of the week is is the monitor that, that I I bought uh, and have since returned. Yeah. Um, but I think it's only fair. It was only fair to have one of those products as my pick of the week, seeing as you know I, I tried them for such a short time before returning them because it was a, absolutely no reflection on the quality of the products. This little um, this little monitor, seven seven inch monitor, um, just really 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 nice um you know it just it just worked for one thing um it had the things you need and and none of the things you didn't need if um in the sense that uh you know it had hdmi in and out it had you could take power or it could fit camera batteries on it i mean it is a it is a monitor that's designed to fit on top of a camera perhaps in some way um uh whatever type of camera um uh, uh so it, its color reproduction was quite good it, it you it could have live histograms and scopes and things like that um not that i needed those for office work <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was uh, it was a great little bit a uh, great piece of kit and the reason i've chosen this one rather than the teleprompter itself is this is the one i found harder to pack back in its box <laughs> Oh really? <laughs> I really wanted to keep it, but I just have no use case for it, sadly. So see, um, see, when, so it whenever went back. you, whenever you see me in these episodes, looking down to my left bottom, I'm looking at exactly that monitor because this is my little, <laughs> this is my little control monitor for the recording. So um, that's mm -hmm. when I check if everyone is like, if everything is fine and the sound is coming through. So I know this one. <laughs> I do know it. I use yeah. it, and it's it's cheap, but it does it does 1080p, and it's. Uh, Pretty decent it does, yeah. Thing, yeah, yeah, and so um, yeah, uh, it worked great. It, it would have worked fine as a com uh, as a second uh, computer monitor, especially if you were doing you know editing and you were using it as a, a control monitor. You can calibrate it. You can change. You can change all the settings on it to make sure that you're getting a, a fairly true picture out of it. So um, it would uh, it would have been worked great if I if I needed it for that sort of thing. Which I could just see Emer thinking. This makes no sense to me. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Imar. Speaking of Imar, here is Imar's yeah. pick of the week. It's an app. I, 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 yeah, I had way too much fun um, with messing around with apps this week. So this is Light Leap. If anybody knows Video Leap, if you've ever heard yeah. of that, I, I would use that quite a bit for um, just making little um, things for work and stuff. And I find it very good. Uh, and there's, what does it do? they've got a photo app that's called photo fox which is just like a photo editor but this appears to be new um uh it it does the sky changing thing <laughs> which oh it's is, a sky replacement um, that okay. was that's it does that it does masking, it kind of does, it does light effects changes, yeah. it does bokehs it does it, it's a bit it, it's a bit wacky you know they're a bit fun um it's good i have but, this I, I think this is a fabulous uh, app i yeah, have but they're sweet never, is good they i've never actually done yeah it is actually i agree with you um I've never done sky replacement in any picture before, so um, I just added in I added into our um, shared album my version of of, a sky of what I apply I use this for. Now it's a bit psychedelic and a bit colourful, but um, yeah, I was really impressed that it put that lovely sunset in the back of my picture. Very cool. You don't um, get those often in Ireland, right? <laughs> <laughs> not where I live because I'm not, I'm not not in the right place. I'm in a valley and I'm I'm you know the west is over there so I don't really uh yeah. you know I, I wouldn't get a nice sunset very often or get to see it unless I'm in the west. Got to come for a visit, Mark. Absolutely. When all this is done. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. To us here. We'll do that. The Wild we'll Atlantic Way You're trip. all welcome. Come on by. <laughs> yeah. Bring oh, your yes, mask. <laughs> so, Jeremiah, you have also chosen an app share with us well I, I i did just to continue uh i noticed that adrian had ordered some specs yeah i have i've uh, ordered some and, anaglyph specs yeah and and i have a feeling <laughs> that once he gets those specs which i'm sure will be fast oh. uh that that he will get addicted to shooting 3d images and there's there's different um obviously different apps that do it. This one I like because it allows me to line up the left and right images just with my finger. Uh, it's and called if it doesn't 3D work, could... Photo Stereo Image Maker. Yeah, and and it, it takes, you know, left and right, obviously, it will separate it, you could output it and load it into another 
application. Um, so so for, when you say left and right, you, you take those pictures in succession and it'll make this into like an anaglyph or something. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And um, so it obviously works best for things that are not moving. True. Uh, and that's why you haven't seen many pictures of the squirrel. <laughs> can, you, can, you have, can you have two phones um, side by side and fire them at the same time and then put those two into the app and uh, align them uh, somehow? Sure, you can because you can load cool. left and right, um, you know, separately. Uh, and then you can, you can uh, move the, the nodal point, uh, which is the point of convergence. So that's um, that's easy. And then then you just it. need two iPhone 12 Max Pros and put them next to each other and <laughs> on a rig, and then you're but all set. <laughs> the interesting thing is how well this works just on the street. Um, again, with things that are not moving, but it is really effective. And I posted a few on the Discord. Does it give you? Yeah, uh, that was does what. It, does that it was give what. You guides like like. Um, do you get like a little uh, translucent version of the first one, yes. so you can align the second one? Exactly right. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. So, I have to get so that. you get it, so you can go. Oh, I I I can focus on the second tree as being my. I see. point or, I see. or further right, and you yeah. can line it that up that sounds like sounds like the next challenge <laughs> it sounds like fun. It, it was, uh, i like 3D it 3d yeah. challenge would be really in the discord nice. i've been looking at the pictures popping up in the discord the anaglyph do you have your do you have fans, glasses i've not done that no, no I so i did, so there's yeah. ton, tons on amazon for just a couple of quid Ema, but it's the same ones that you well i've ordered even just some cardboard uh, ones no. to be honest but no. No, the cinema have electronic glasses that alternate uh, polarized. Oh, not here. They don't, Jeremiah. <laughs> Are you <laughs> saying that they're red and green glasses in the they're, cinema? Uh, like, no, they're um. They look like a little cheap black pair of sunglasses no, no, th that you those put on. Those are those are polarized lenses, and they they operate uh, a different technique of three D. Okay. Okay. Uh, it, okay. One is horizontal one is so the, the red the red eye and the green eye the little cardboard ones like yeah, we used the to cheap, have years cheap ago. ones yeah. and okay. and uh, i i have seen i think i i think i've mentioned this before i think it was a thomas demand shot big 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 anaglyph shot at a museum show wow. uh, and glasses were on the wall for mm -hmm. i saw to jaws put, too oh, in the cinema God, it was 3d <laughs> um like that I so so I I have half an idea that um, to print a short a small zine uh, on pulp paper like mm. you print a comic on because <clears throat> sure. this is this this is how I experienced three D image as a kid you'd have a you'd have a comic Co comics uh, mm -hmm. and the glasses would be on the front of a comic and I have yeah, half yeah, a, yeah. half an idea to try and do that see just what it would look like with my own photography oh, yeah, rather yeah, rather yeah, than yeah. Or, or or a group of people could, could compile That's it a fantastic um, idea. and then you could ship a pair of glasses with every copy of the zine <laughs> it looked good you could you could, you could get people it's to fun. submit shots yeah. to that now through the kind of couldn't you yeah yeah, yeah. Be so cool. it's fun it's, go it's goofy <laughs> let me let me I bring up uh, my pick of the week and this has nothing to do with any of this is nothing to do with well <clears throat> a bit to do with photography um, you know, you know how we are all kind of locked down, hunkered down, being isolating and not being out there. I mean, yeah, I, I think I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So, so how about going somewhere and just driving around the street and listening to the radio there? There's a website that does that for you. And I find it strangely intriguing. It's called Drive and Listen. And you can go to different places in the world. It's a bit jerky in the video, but it's actually very smooth when you have it on your web browser. Then you can go to like any of these cities. Let's say you want to drive in Dublin. So it'll bring up oh, wow. Dublin. That's cool. And at the same time, <laughs> oh there, my God, is, I know where that is. <laughs> there is Dublin <laughs> FM 104 playing oh, on the car radio. So oh you can... I'm not putting it on here because of like a content strike kind of thing, but don't knock um, over the cyclist. <laughs> here's Dunedin that's in New excellent. Zealand. So if you want to go to New Zealand wow. and drive around New Zealand, that's uh, oh, there yeah. with New Zealand radio. The hits 989.4. Or you want to be you don't in control. <laughs> you, don't, you don't control where you're going. Right? No, it's, it's videos. Free. It's yeah. just videos. But it's it's being okay. in a different mm -hmm. city, listening to the radio there and driving city. around. City, yeah. And Florence, it's so can you drive around Florence? It's yeah, yeah, so intriguing. Istanbul, let's go to Turkey. 
that's for a change. That's, that sounds like a, that's a great idea. It you know, a, a colleague so of mine put me onto a thing recently. He says on one of his monitors, he often runs a, a webcam of a, a watering hole in an African wildlife reserve and just sits there. You know, when when lockdown and work gets really stressful, he just turn and look at his other monitor where there's like uh, g- gazelles, wa- you know, taking a drink and stuff like that in real time. Or Rodeo Drive. Yeah, that is Los Angeles. There we go. <laughs> That's Rodeo Drive. I know exactly where that is. <laughs> so, a, uh, and it's playing NPR so News. So manicured, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. KCRW. Sure. So, um, I think. By the way, to that point, to that point, there is an app. Uh, there is an app. Um, I, I don't know what it's called. Uh, it's a radio app. Uh, you get a globe of the world and any place you touch i remember oh, that sounds nice too yeah i'll that have to brilliant. radio i'll have to find that, I have that I, if we if yeah, we find it we put terrific. it in the show notes otherwise we'll bring it up next time because that is intriguing okay too. so that is it for this episode that was a whole a whole ton of fun to prepare and to do and <laughs> make and um and to it find was. out it was i enjoyed it yeah I me too it. i did yeah. Me too. And driving around in some weird place in the world is cool too. Definitely like that. So that's it for this week, everyone. Thanks for your time, and we'll be back soon. Bye bye. 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 You've been listening to the Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Bye.